the 1st of September, 1939. After a false accusation that the Poles attacked a German radio station, Nazi Germany launches a retaliatory campaign against Poland, triggering World War II. After defeating the Polish army, the Germans ruthlessly suppress the Poles, whom they consider to be racially inferior. And in the weeks that follow the German attack on Poland, German SS, police, and military units shoot thousands of Polish civilians, including many members of the Polish nobility, clergy, and intelligentsia. In the fall of 1941, Nazi Germany begins to implement a plan codenamed Operation Reinhardt to systematically murder almost two million Jews living in the German-administered territory of occupied Poland called the General Government. Three killing centers are established as part of this plan, Belzec, Sobibor, and Treblinka. One of the main perpetrators of this operation, who will oversee Sobibor's gas chambers, becoming known as the Gasmeister, is Erich Bauer. Erich Hermann Bauer was born on the 26th of March 1900 in Berlin, then part of the German Empire. After elementary school, he began training as a lathe operator. However, he did not complete his apprenticeship, as he had been drafted into military service. During the First World War, which lasted from the 28th of July 1914 to the 11th of November 1918, Bauer fought on the Western Front and then was taken prisoner by the French. He was released in early 1920 and initially worked as an unskilled laborer, but after receiving appropriate training, Bauer began working as a driver. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg. From 1933, Bauer was employed as a tram conductor with the Berlin Transport Authority. In the same year, he joined the SA and held the rank of squad leader there. The SA, also known as the Sturmabteilung, was the Nazi paramilitary force commonly referred to as the Stormtroopers or the Brown Shirts due to the color of their uniforms. In 1937, Bauer became a member of the Nazi Party. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. The German occupation of Poland was exceptionally brutal. The Nazis considered Poles to be racially inferior, and they launched a campaign of terror intended to destroy the Polish nation and culture, and to reduce the Poles to a leaderless population of peasants and workers laboring for German masters. In 1940, Bauer started to work for the Nazi euthanasia program, codenamed T4, which was the systematic murder of institutionalized patients with disabilities in Germany. The patients were transported by bus or by rail into six killing centers, where they were murdered. In these centers, the Nazis gassed, shot, or killed by lethal injection those who were deemed unworthy of life, such as residents of welfare institutions, some concentration camp inmates, the chronically sick, the mentally and physically disabled, homosexuals, and even sick German soldiers. At first, Bauer worked as a driver, often transporting people from hospitals or homes, but he rose through the ranks swiftly. After the war, Bauer recounted one of his initial mass killings. A pipe linked a car's exhaust to a sealed off lab in the asylum. We trapped a few patients inside and started the engine. It took eight minutes to kill them all. In early 1942, Bauer was assigned to the command of Odilo Globocznik, who served as the SS and police leader of Lublin in German-occupied Poland. He received an SS uniform and rose to the rank of staff sergeant. By April 1942, he had been sent to Sobibor. The main purpose of the Sobibor extermination camp was to facilitate the mass murder of Jews and other targeted groups as part of the Nazi regime's genocidal policies. When the transport of 40 to 60 freight cars arrived at the Sobibor railway station, only 20 cars at a time were taken into the camp, while the rest of the victims remained locked in the rail cars. The victims were then brought into the so-called arrival area, where an SS man would give a speech welcoming them, saying that they had reached a transit camp on their way to the labor camps. They were also told that before embarking on the next part of their journey, they were to take showers, have their clothing disinfected, and get a meal. The men and women were separated, and the children were sent with the women. The Nazis ordered the victims to remove their clothing and hand over their valuables. The Jews were then marched on the run to the gas chambers. 
The honking of geese would obscure the cries of the victims from those still sitting in the locked rail cars as they were being beaten, screamed at, and having warning shots fired at them. About 450 to 550 Jews were forced into the chambers at a time. The gas chambers were then sealed once the maximum number of victims was inside. Poisonous gas was then piped in. Within 20 to 30 minutes, all those inside were dead. Those who were too ill, weak, or elderly to make the walk to the gas chambers were shot in an open pit. From April 1942 until mid-October 1943, the German SS and their auxiliaries killed at least 167,000 people at Sobibor. At Sobibor, Bauer oversaw the camp's gas chambers, earning the nickname Badmeister or Bathmeister among the Jews. Holocaust survivors later refer to him as the Gasmeister or Gasmaster. After the war, Bauer provided a detailed description of the Jews' reaction as they entered the gas chamber, saying, It may sound astonishing that the Jews went unsuspecting to their death. Resistance occurred extremely seldom. The Jews only became suspicious when they were already in the gas chambers. At this point in time, however, there was no turning back. The chambers were densely packed. The doors were sealed airtight and immediately the gassing procedure commenced. After some 20 to 30 minutes, there was complete silence in the gas chambers. The people were gassed and dead. Then the chambers were opened. Work Jews dragged the people who had been killed out of the gas chambers and transported the victims by means of lorry to the graves. Later, the victims were cremated. Described as short and stocky, Bauer, a notorious alcoholic, maintained a private bar in his room. Unlike other SS guards, he looked untidy and smelled strongly of alcohol and chlorine. His room featured a photo of himself and his family with a Führer. In the summer of 1943, rumors began to circulate that Sobibor would soon cease operations, and the prisoners understood that this meant certain death for all of them. The Sobibor prisoners knew this since the Belzhets prisoners, who did the same work as they did, had sewn messages into their clothing before they were killed by Sobibor guards, who had shot them the same day they arrived in the camp. The next day, the Sobibor prisoners found all their clothing full of blood. Chaim Engel, a Polish Jewish prisoner, found a note in a pocket which said, We worked at Belzhets for one year and did not know where we would be sent next. They said it would be Germany. Now we are in Sobibor and know what to expect. Be aware that you will be killed also. Avenge us. And they did. In September 1943, 20 Jewish Red Army prisoners of war, the soldiers who had the necessary expertise to pull off an escape, arrived at Sobibor on a transport from the Minsk ghetto and were selected for labor. One of them, Alexander Pechersky, would become a leader of the revolt. On the 14th of October 1943, the day of the uprising, Bauer unexpectedly left for Helm, situated almost 40 kilometers south of Sobibor, to obtain supplies. The resistance almost postponed the uprising because Bauer was at the top of the death list of SS guards to be assassinated before the escape planned by revolt leader Alexander Pechersky. However, the revolt had to commence earlier than planned because Bauer returned sooner than expected, and upon discovering that SS senior squad leader Rudolf Beckmann was dead, Bauer began shooting at two Jewish prisoners, unloading his truck. The gunfire prompted Pechersky to initiate the revolt earlier than anticipated. The uprising began at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and one hour later, a total of 11 SS officers were killed by the rebels. Chaos then took over. The prisoners had to escape by climbing over a barbed wire fence or by running out of the main gate through a minefield under heavy machine gun fire. Some stepped on mines, some gave up and did not run at all. Approximately 300 prisoners were able to escape, but most of those were chased down and killed. However, some 50 of the escapees did survive the war. After the revolt, Bauer remained at Sobibor until the end of October 1943, when German camp officials, along with the Travniki trained guards, dismantled the camp and planted a pine forest on the site. Travniki men were Central and Eastern European Nazi collaborators, consisting of either volunteers or recruits from prisoner of war camps, set up by Nazi Germany for Soviet Red Army soldiers who had been captured in the border regions during Operation Barbarossa, launched in June 1941. 
After the war, Bauer was detained by the Americans in Austria until 1946. Upon his return to Berlin, he worked as a laborer, clearing war debris. In 1949, Bauer was arrested when Samuel Lehrer and Esther Raab, both former Jewish prisoners of Sobibor, spotted him at a fairground. Confronted by Raab, Bauer allegedly asked, how is it that you are still alive? Soon after, he was taken into custody, with his trial starting the next year. During his trial, Bauer claimed that he only worked as a truck driver at Sobibor, delivering supplies. He admitted knowing about the mass murders, but denied any involvement. His main witnesses, former Sobibor guards, supported his story. However, Bauer was convicted based on the testimony of four Jewish witnesses who had escaped. They identified him as the gas master of Sobibor, responsible for the gas chambers and shootings. They also accused him of cruelty towards inmates and victims on their way to the gas chambers. In May 1950, Bauer was initially sentenced to death for crimes against humanity. However, since capital punishment had been abolished in West Germany by that point, his sentence was changed to life imprisonment. While in prison, he confessed to his role in the mass murder at Sobibor and sometimes testified against former SS colleagues. Erich Bauer was 79 years old when he died on the 4th of February, 1980, at Tegel Prison in West Berlin. There were no tears shed for Erich Bauer. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.